When it comes to the U.S. government's suppression of Huawei, it's fair to say the approach has been all-encompassing. Up to now, Huawei can no longer buy the vast majority of high-end American chips or use technologies controlled by the U.S., such as chip manufacturing services from TSMC. Facing this challenge, Huawei teamed up with SMIC and worked tirelessly. They finally cracked the yield rate for the 7 nanometers chip process. Even better, their improved version now matches the early 5 nanometers standards of TSMC. This breakthrough allowed Huawei to stabilize its core businesses, like communication equipment and enterprise services, before their chip stockpiles ran out. They weathered the storm. Last year, Huawei's phone business rose from the ashes. With their self-developed Kirin chips and Harmony OS, they made a powerful comeback. In China, their phone sales have surpassed Apple, securing the number two spot. But the relief was short-lived. Harsher sanctions followed. Microsoft's supply license to Huawei is set to expire, and the U.S. Department of Commerce has no plans to renew it. Huawei was ready for the worst. They've developed the X90 PC chip, paired with the PC version of Harmony OS, completely cutting ties with American technology. The U.S. hasn't just targeted big-ticket items like chips operating systems and productivity software. They've even gone after smaller details, determined to trip Huawei up at every turn. One example is revoking Huawei's membership in the Bluetooth SIG. This move barred Huawei from accessing the latest Bluetooth standards or developing new devices based on them. A commercial organization, under pressure from the U.S. government, threw aside its credibility and broke its agreements. It was a modern-day robbery farce. Huawei had to adapt. They either skipped integrating Bluetooth into new products, bought chips from other vendors, or stuck with older Bluetooth versions like 4.0 or 5.0. But Huawei didn't just roll over. Instead, they tapped into their deep expertise in communications and introduced near-link technology. They've been pushing hard to make it widespread, positioning it as the ultimate replacement for Bluetooth. So what is Nearlink technology? In simple terms, it's a next-generation wireless short-range communication solution. The Nearlink Alliance, led by Huawei, sets its standards. Its features stand out. First, it offers ultra-low latency. Nearlink's transmission delay is as low as 20 microseconds far faster than Bluetooth's 10 milliseconds. Second, it delivers high throughput. Its peak speed hits 12 megabits per second, six times that of Bluetooth, making it ideal for fast data transfers. Third, it supports massive concurrency. Nearlink can connect up to 4,096 devices at once, dwarfing Bluetooth's limit of eight. It's also highly reliable. Thanks to 5G, inspired tech. Its transmission success rate reaches 99.99%. Plus, it's power efficient. In low power mode, it uses just 60% of Bluetooth's energy, perfect for battery-powered gadgets. These strengths make Nearlink a clear upgrade over Bluetooth, setting a new bar for short-range communication. Huawei's ability to launch Nearlink ties directly to several key strengths. Their robust research and development capabilities are a big factor. Huawei has decades of experience in communications, backed by a world-class engineering team. China's supply chain plays a huge role too. From chip design to module production, Chinese companies provide a full industrial backbone. Then there's the thriving hardware ecosystem. China dominates the global hardware market especially in fields like cars, drones, and smart homes. Cost advantages seal the deal. Domestic production efficiency and scale keep Nearlink devices competitively priced. Let's explore how Nearlink shines in real-world scenarios. In smart cars, it's a game-changer. It powers features like active noise cancellation, keyless entry, and 360-degree cameras, enhancing the driving experience. China leads the world in electric vehicles and smart driving tech, making it a perfect fit for Nearlink. 
in the drone sector. Chinese firms hold over 80% of the global market. Nearlink's low latency and reliability boost remote control and data precision. Smart homes are another win. China's smart speakers locks and lights top global sales. Nearlink enables stable power-saving connections across multiple devices. In smart manufacturing, it excels too. Factory robots and sensors need real-time communication. Nearlink's high concurrency and interference resistance meet those demands head-on. Robotics is yet another area. China's service and industrial robots are booming. Nearlink's precise positioning and low power use make them more efficient. These cases show Nearlink isn't just advanced. It slots perfectly into China's industrial strengths. Huawei isn't ditching Bluetooth entirely as they roll out Nearlink. They've taken a smarter path. They're promoting Nearlink while keeping Bluetooth compatibility. Their devices often support both. Take a Huawei phone, for instance. It can use Nearlink to pair with their earbuds for low latency audio. It can also connect to another brand's speaker via Bluetooth 4.0 or 5.2. This setup makes the switch invisible to users. For the average person, it's painless. They keep using familiar Bluetooth gear while enjoying Nearlink's perks, like better sound or smoother gaming. Other companies can follow this lead. Adding Nearlink to products while supporting Bluetooth lets them stay current without alienating customers. Over time, Nearlink's reach will grow. The Nearlink Alliance now boasts over 1,000 members. Certified products exceed 500 models, with shipments topping 100 million units. Once Nearlink hits a critical mass, a tipping point emerges. More companies will adopt it as their go-to standard. At that stage, Bluetooth's dominance could fade. It might even step off the historical stage. Huawei's push isn't just about survival. It's about setting a new benchmark for the industry. Companies that break commercial promises will face consequences. Take ASML, the Dutch lithography giant. They've joined the U.S. in blocking China's advanced chipmaking. If China breaks through with its own lithography machines, ASML stands to lose the most. Huawei's Nearlink saga proves it. Sanctions didn't crush them. They sparked innovation instead. Here's a word for the Americans. Compete fairly and openly. Playing petty tricks to hold others back won't win the day. It'll just make you a laughingstock. Huawei's story shows that tech blockades can't stop a determined player. Nearlink's rise is the evidence. In the future, short-range communication might not belong to Bluetooth. It could belong to Nearlink. That future might arrive sooner than we think.